Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast is your one-stop shop for fantasy football news and advice. Can't decide on who to draft on the first round? Going gaga on how to line up your team. Got you covered. Traditional leagues, dynasty leagues, PPR leagues, IDP leagues, IDP leagues, even daily fantasy football leagues. Join us as we break down all the questions of fantasy football. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Football Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss everything in the world of fantasy football. As always, I'm Jeremiah. Hey, I'm Anthony. And we have, we just had a wild and crazy day in free agency. We had a lot going on yesterday, Anthony. Uh, so I don't know where we should start first. Uh, there's a whole lot that happened yesterday. Uh, you know what? Let's start with... Uh, the Washington professional football team. All right, so let's do that. You got the quarterback who hates everybody. Mm-hmm. You got receivers who are gone. Mm-hmm. You got a GM that just got fired. Mm-hmm. And you got an owner who's basically being stubborn because the quarterback is like, "Look, man, like you trade away my good players. I don't want to be here anymore. You're franchising me for the second year in a row. Can I please just get my release or get traded?" And Snyder basically said back to him, you can go bleep yourself. I'm not doing that. You're staying in Washington for the long run because at least now we have a quarterback. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> yeah. A lot, ego. A lot going on, man. <laughs> it's ego. Like uh, The base of everything is ego, right? Because you'd look at the situation that they're in, right? Like the team was pretty good last year. Not great, but, you know, good enough for them to win. The problem is you had good players that aren't there anymore. You have Pierre Garçon who, you know, been there in the NFL for a little bit. He's 30 years old. He had a good season last year. He had 1,000 yards, you know, 1,041 yards and three touchdowns. He had a good season last year. He goes to San Francisco because he wants to be with Kirk Cousins or uh, with Kyle Shanahan again, basically. Well, Kirk Cousins might be there, but. And Kirk Cousins you know. might be there, but he wanted to be with the offensive coordinator, now head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. He wanted to be reunited with him because that's where he had some of his success. He's gone. Then you also get on the other side, Deshaun Jackson, who, again, 1,000-yard receiver. By the way, that's never happened in the history of the NFL, where they basically take 2,000-yard receivers, and they say, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can go away. Both of you, usually they save one of them because, you know, you want to help out your quarterback. That's kind of a nice thing to do. Let's get the quarterback happy. Let's, you know, give him one of his options that he has so that way he doesn't get mad and, you know, wants his release. So Deshaun Jackson, he's gone as well, 1,005 yards and four touchdowns. So... You get rid of both of them. You can say, like, oh, well, he still has Jordan Reed. Cool. Also, Jordan Reed gets concussions all the time, and you don't know if he's going to stay healthy. So through this whole fantasy football perspective, it's something where I honestly don't know if Kirk Cousins is good or not. Like, he might be one of those, like, 10 to 15 tier quarterbacks where, you know, kind of Matt Stafford-esque because even though, you know, Kirk Cousins almost threw for 5,000 yards – it didn't mean they won anything. You know, it didn't mean they are going to make it deep into the playoffs. All it meant was they threw for a bunch of yards. Matt Stafford threw for a bunch of yards. That didn't help out the Lions at all. You know, they didn't ever make it anywhere deep in the playoffs. But now, with both of those guys being gone, it's going to be a lot harder for him to throw for near to 5,000. It's going to be hard for him to throw for 4,000 yards if you basically take away two of your top receiving targets. Yeah, and I do think the biggest, the biggest winner in the Washington offense, um, Jamison Crowder. Because uh, remember, he was very, very productive for the Washington football team last mm-hmm. year. And, uh, you know, he was kind of in the shadows a little bit because, you know, they had Pierre Garçon and Deshaun Jackson, 2,000-yard uh, receivers, which I'm still mind-blown that this is the first time that 2,000-yard receivers on the same team were leaving. I'm still mind-blown about that. But 
Anyways, I do think that this definitely has to raise Jim Jimis uh James uh, I can't even say his name. Jameson Crowder's fantasy value. Right. Uh, you gotta also talk about Josh Doxson as well, who was drafted in the first round for Washington. But outside of that, um reality wise, yeah, I don't know if this team's gonna be good. They're not gonna win a whole lot, but fantasy purposes, I still think we could get solid numbers from uh Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. I still think we can. You know, he still has pretty solid offensive weapons. I actually like Jamison Crowder now. I think he has a chance to be a top 25 receiver in fantasy, uh, potentially top 20, but that's probably saying a whole lot. I mean, he's going to get his chance. He's going to get a lot of targets, so I do think he's someone that you need to draft in the middle rounds. He could probably – he. I think he's a sleeper this year Yeah. because of that. Uh, Josh Dawson, I do think he's someone that could be a sleeper too. Uh, but I do think we have to kind of like play way to see game. But he will definitely be there in the late to middle rounds or middle to late rounds, I should say. Yeah. And Jordan Reed is probably going to be a top five tight end again. So the one I, I think I think Jordan Reed's going to get more targets this year. He will get more targets. The one caveat I would say with this whole thing, whether it be Jameson Crowder or whoever, talk about how you know they're going to get their opportunity. And yes, they will get their opportunity, assuming that the you know. Assuming Washington doesn't pick up anybody else as far as wide receivers go to like help their team out that much, we're all also assuming that it's with Kirk Cousins as a quarterback. Because if it's not Kirk Cousins as a quarterback, then all of a sudden we've got some issues. We got Colt McCoy. Then all of a sudden we got a guy who's basically most known for getting rocked by James Harrison a handful of years ago. And that's not the same thing. You know, we can think that Crowder's going to do well with Kirk Cousins because Kirk Cousins at least is talented enough at throwing the ball and getting some yards. Cole McCoy can't stay healthy because he's tiny, and every time he tries to run around, you get a big linebacker or a defensive lineman that just basically wants to destroy him, and he doesn't take hits too well. He's kind of got the whole Robert Griffin the third kind of scenario with him, speaking of, you know, Washington quarterbacks they used to have. So it's going to be something where... You know, I hope that Kirk Cousins. Actually, I kind of hope he leaves, honestly, because Kirk Cousins, yeah, because the thing, like, I think he's a decent enough quarterback, and if he stays, it's not going to go well for him, man. Like, he's going to throw for like three thousand yards because they franchise him again, right? So they're going to franchise him. He's going to throw for less than four thousand yards, probably, because there's no wide receivers on there that are actually decent, or at least have a thousand yards in their career. And you're going to basically tell him, all right, you do everything for us. You make everything go. You make this work out. And it's one thing if you have the team he had before, but he's not going to do well. And then he's going to get a lower contract because they basically made him play for another one-year contract. Like, I don't like how this goes. And even from a fantasy football perspective, yeah, maybe Jamison Crowder, maybe all of a sudden he takes the next leap. Or it could be a Jordan Matthews thing over in Philadelphia where he got his opportunity. It's like, okay, now you're the number one guy. And mm -mm, not the same thing. Once he got his opportunity, he wasn't as good. Yeah, that, that's why I'm not going to rate Jamison Crowder that high because like there's too much of a risk there. I think with having the Sean Jackson, Pierre Garçon there really helped him out. Yeah. But uh, I kind of want to talk about Pierre Garçon. He, mm -hmm. he goes to the 49ers on a five-year deal. Right. Uh, I believe he's set to make $60 million guaranteed. Uh, oh, actually, no, five-year contract. Wait. Twenty million guaranteed right. and a twelve million signing bonus. It is worth forty seven and a half million. Uh I do think that this is uh I think the last two years are probably like fake years. I think it's kinda like similar to Anquan Bolden a few years ago. All these contracts are fake contracts after about <laughs> a year or two. Yeah, pretty much. Uh but Garcon was he was very productive in two thousand sixteen. Uh he had seventy nine receptions, one thousand and forty one yards. He only had three touchdowns. But, man, he was a part of a really good offense that's right. no longer going to be existent anymore. Uh, 2013, he has best year as a leading receiver. He did have 113 receptions, 1,346 yards, and five touchdowns. But, honestly, he he's he's the best receiver on the San Francisco 49ers team right now. He's mm -hmm. the best receiver. Uh, this is a team that's extended Jeremy Curley for three years, who I really like. I think he can be a really good slot receiver this year. And so basically, it's Pierre Garçon, Jeremy Curley, and Marquise Goodwin, who they signed as well. So these are the three top guys. Uh, I don't think the Niners are done adding receivers at all. But I do think that if Kirk Cousins happens to go to the 49ers this year, I think Garçon could be a top 20 receiver. I think it all depends on the quarterback play because they have Brian Hoare, who has been pretty serviceable as a starter. Right. Um, I do think he can be... 
I do think he can get some value out of Garcon, and mm-hmm. Matt Barkley probably can get some value out of Garcon too. But I think he can be a top 20 receiver. Deshaun Jackson, I think he's going to add a whole new element to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you know, he's going to play a long slide. You know, Mike Evans, he's going to, hey, as Jamie Swinson as quarterback. I think Deshaun Jackson is going to be a strong receiver too this year. As oh, yeah. Well. No, he'll definitely help out. Uh, Jameis Winston, he'll help him basically stretch the field and stuff like that, and make it so that way you don't kind of rely and double team Mike Evans too much. Like that for that part is going to help him out a lot. And the thing, the weirdest thing is with Brian Hoyer. Like you can make jokes about Brian Hoyer about how he's not that good. No, he's going to be the Niners' first string quarterback. Okay, he also was the only one that had a winning season with the Browns anytime recently. Like when he was there, he was seven and six as the starter for them a couple of years back. So he at least. Is competent, right? He's not great, but he's just someone that, you know, like the whole like wins above replacement thing in baseball to where basically you just take like the average baseball player and see how he would do. He's above that. He's above the average quarterback. He's not great, but if, you know, you need someone to go, he can do it. He can be your guy. Like he's not going to blow anything away. I mean, hell, he had 12 touchdowns, 13 interceptions, so that wasn't great. But also he did that for the Browns, so you give him a little bit more benefit of the doubt because and, of that. And you know who was his offensive coordinator in Cleveland that year? Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. So there you but go, But that's basically man. what you do, right? Once <laughs> yeah. you become the boss somewhere, you basically take people that you knew from before. Like, I work at a restaurant, and it's one of those things where the manager that we have there, like, I realized this as I was there a little bit longer, all the servers slash other managers that are there are people that he's worked with at other places. He's like, okay, cool, I trust you, I trust you, I trust you. Okay, everybody come here. It's the same thing in any other job. I mean, you know, Shanahan got here, and he's like, okay, Pierre Garçon, you get here. Brian Hoyer, you get here. Kirk Cousins, if you can, you get here. Like, he's trying to get everybody that he knows that can produce for him and that he at least has a familiarity with. Who knew that Kyle Shanahan can have so much impact in fantasy football? Who knew? Who knew? All right, well, we're going to take our first break here, and we're going to talk about Tony Romo and Brock Osweiler when we get back to the Golden State Media Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G- GSMCpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to the Going to Me Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. And, you know, the Browns made some moves in free agency. And that's right, guys. We're talking about the Browns and their fantasy football podcasts. Uh, they made probably one of the most surprising moves yesterday on the first day of free agency. And that is trading for Brock Osweiler from the Texans in a move that will pretty much take his contract, uh, his $60 million guaranteed. Uh, but honestly, I honestly think Cleveland pretty much did this for the draft picks. That's just basically it because basically. they look like they're going to cut him. Uh, this is basically the equivalent of the NBA buyout type of deal, honestly, that we usually – see at the NBA trade deadline that we've seen. But, uh, you know, the Browns, they, they just released RG3. Uh, they That was just breaking news that just occurred over, I think, like 15 or 30 minutes ago. So they released RG3. So maybe, th- does that mean that they're going to keep Osweiler? No. Maybe? No? Okay. They don't want Osweiler. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just... I'm just they, have no, yeah. they have no real need for Osweiler. Like, <laughs> They're going to give him to a team that is just kind of looking to either, you know, have a solid backup or maybe a team that's really bad and whatever we're going to be bad anyways. But the Browns seem to be in the situation where they just want to get a bunch of picks, which they got for him. So they seem to be pretty good with that. I don't think they're going to keep him because basically they had other teams asking about him as soon as they got him. And they're probably just going to be like, yep, all right, cool, that's fine. We're just going to give you to this, you know, team over here. 
But you got RG3. He's released. I feel bad for RG3. I loved RG3 so much. I, I did. I, I liked him coming out of, uh, out of Baylor. I right. really did. He. I really thought he was the second best quarterback in that draft, even though there was argument that, oh, he could be better than Andrew Luck. I was like, no. Andrew Luck was the career cut top pick that year. Um, it's it's amazing because it's the same draft. And uh, Washington well, gave up a lot for him that year, too. And it's also the draft where they took Kirk Cousins. And I know. That's crazy how they... It's crazy how they drafted both of those guys the same year. And people I, thought that remember, was weird Ka- from the Ka- jump. Remember, Kyle Shanahan was part of that. Uh, he was the offensive coordinator of that team too. So, mm-hmm. so, but you know, getting back to Osweiler here, uh, what's hypothetically say that he does become the Browns' starting quarterback? Uh, mm-hmm. Does he make the Browns' offense better? Uh, no. No, we. I, it's hard for me to say that too because. It's amazing how far he has fallen off in a year. He right. went from being the hottest free agent to being probably the worst starting quarterback in the league. And you can – honestly, you can't argue for that. But honestly, when you look at the other other quarterbacks on losing teams, I'd rather have Jake Cutler than Brock Osweiler. Uh, I'd rather have Colin Kaepernick than Brock Osweiler. He's the worst quarterback in the league. But – it looks like the Browns are going to cut him. But, you know, they also made some really good – well, I don't want to say good, but they also made some free agency deals. Uh, they got Kenny Britt from free agency. They signed him to a four-year, $32.5 million contract. That includes $17 million guaranteed money. So Britt is about to enter his eighth season. He was really productive for the Los Angeles Rams last year. Remember, he was playing with Jerry Goff, who – he looked he looked terrible last year. Yeah, you talk about the worst at, quarterback in the NFL. He might be the worst. But he's a rookie though, so True. I'm not going to say that. True. But Kenny Britt was really productive. He had career highs in receptions, 68. He had career numbers in receiving yards. It was a thousand and two. And he was the first Rams player in nine years to reach the thousand yard milestone. Since what, like Tory Holt, probably? Yes, he nine years. So. He had a real good year. I think he was a solid receiver three. Uh, he looks like he, he – honestly, when you look at the Cleveland Browns on paper right now, because Terrell Pryor is still a free agent. Right. Josh Gordon probably will not be back with that team. No. So, basically, it's going to be Kenny Britt and Corey Coleman. So, you got to say, maybe Kenny Britt's probably the best receiver in Cleveland right now. So, I do think he might have a strong chance to be a receiver two. Uh, I definitely think he can have a chance to be a top 25 receiver again because that's how he finished last year in fantasy. Yeah, no, he can absolutely be someone that you, you know, have not as like you obviously your number one player wide receiver, but like he can be somebody that you kind of, you know, have that, you know, because you don't know, you know, exactly how good the rest of the team will be around him. You don't know if the quarterback will be good, but you didn't know how good the quarterback was last time. He still got a thousand yards. So you got to think you can do that again this year. You know, it was the first time he got a thousand yards in his career, but also name me a good quarterback for the Rams last year. Forget about Jared Goff. Anybody else on that team, name me a quarterback who was good on that team, and he still got a 1,000 yards. So that would at least, you know, make me trust that he's going to do that again. Yeah, and let's just say that Brock Osweiler doesn't get cut and is with the Browns. I think Kenny Brick can finish with good numbers again. Yeah. I do, even though Brock Osweiler somehow doesn't even like throwing to receivers. We all know how you feel about Brock Osweiler. Yeah. What if one of Cleveland traded for Fedorowitz? That would be funny. I would be just like, are <laughs> you are you trying to? What are you, <laughs> are you doing? Tr- oh, man. Well, anyways, uh, Terrell Pryor, he's one of the top free agents at the receiver position this year. He actually visits Washington yesterday, but he left without a contract. Uh, I do think that he will get a really good contract. Uh, I, I think Cleveland might will want to bring him back, but I think they want to bring him back at the right price. I think Terrell Pryor is going to – honestly, I kind of like Terrell Pryor with the 49ers. I'm not saying that because I'm a 49ers fan, but I do think that he's young enough and he's productive enough to be he, – he, he's productive enough to make you competitive. Because we see how Terrell Pryor was last year. In his first year converting from a receiver, he was abs- – it, it was good. He, If he develops well, he can be a stud receiver. He did really well in his first year as a receiver and I think I like the idea of having Terrell Pryor, Pierre Garçon and Jeremy Curley if that does happen that is 
that receiver core is ten times better than they had last year. Right, and that's no. a good and that's a good uh, receiver core for Brian Hoyer there. Right, no, I mean the thing with Terrell Pryor is he. It's amazing what a year will do, right? It's amazing what one year from going from this guy's a joke, can't believe he tries to be a quarterback in the NFL to, oh, yeah, we'll pay him a bunch of money as a wide receiver. Like, it's just kind of weird how that goes. But 1,000 yards, you know, 1,000 yards may not be the benchmark that it was a few years ago before everybody started passing all around. But still, to convert into a wide receiver and get 1,000 yards, that's pretty impressive. And, again, on a bad team, maybe he's, like, stuffing the stats a little bit, but – Still somebody that, you know, did really well for his first basically go around as a wide receiver. And now if you give him to a actually good team and a good quarterback, like I understand the Niners aren't that, but if you give him to an actual good team or whatever, then all of a sudden you have a situation where his numbers can be better and now we don't even worry about it because you had the whole thing last year with uh what was it? Akeep Tlaib and someone else. Oh, Pac Man. Yeah, and Pac Man Jones, yeah was, you know, making fun of him, saying, like, oh, he's not that good, he's garbage, you know, looking in the trash can for trial prior, like, all these things. But, you know, he is somebody who, I mean, if he stays with the Browns, now all of a sudden you've got a pretty good receiving core. The problem is you don't have any wide receivers that can get the ball thrown to them because the quarterback isn't exactly a thing. But you at least would then have the situation where you have three pretty good wide receivers on the roster. Yeah, and I, I like that idea, but I do think Terrell Pryor, I think he's going to end up in Cleveland, either in San Francisco. Uh, I, w- I would say Philadelphia, but they have Torrey Smith and Alshon Jeffrey now. Right. So it's tough for me to speculate on a spot for him, but I do think Terrell Pryor will be on the team. But uh, I, I said this all along. I do think that he should have been a receiver from day one. He came into the league, but he wanted to play quarterback. It didn't work out for him that well. He finally made a transition, and it's working out for him. He's still young enough to make your receiving core and your team competitive. Right. So I do think, I do think he will be a receiver too, no matter where he ends up. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to take our last break here, and I think we're going to talk about Tony Romo now. Got Tony Romo a little bit. Yeah, we're going to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo for a bit. Yeah, and maybe some other free agency deals that occurred over the past day. Uh, but we have a lot more to discuss when we get back to the Going to Meet Concepts Fantasy Football Podcast. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. And welcome back to Going to Meet Consoles Fantasy Football Podcast. And uh, we still have a lot to talk about in this last segment here. Uh, we can't do this show without talking about Tony Romo because, you know, he's been the hottest name on the market right now. Still technically not on the market. <laughs> well, he will. Well, he's he was supposed to be released. You assume I, you assume he's going to be on the market. There's no guarantee no. that Tony Romo eventually <laughs> leaves. Like Jason uh, Jerry Jones could basically just say like, "Yeah, no, we're keeping him the whole time. I don't care. He's going to be our quarterback." Jerry, but you also have Dak Prescott. That's fine. Tony Romo's going to be our quarterback. But but Jerry, you got Dak Prescott. Just, Tony Romo's going to be our quarterback. Like you know, there's no guarantee that he's going to be uh, released or traded because. Yesterday, all we were hearing was, oh, okay, cool, so he's going to be released and the team's going to go and sign him. And then all of a sudden, it was like, nope, they're going to trade him. Okay, but there's not that many teams that actually could, you know, use him because if you give him to the Browns, that's that's just mean. If you give him to the Jets, (laughs) that's a little bit nicer, but still mean. And that basically leaves, what, the Broncos and the Texans, maybe the Chiefs, but then you also got to figure out the situation with Alex Smith because then poor Alex Smith's basically getting benched twice in his career. And there's really no other scenario because everything else either has a quarterback that they love, a la, you know, Green Bay, New Orleans, Pittsburgh, something like that, or a quarterback that they're thinking about, you know, using for the long term. And hopefully he can be better like a Miami or uh, Philadelphia or Tampa Bay or something like that. So there's only a few options where the team's going to be good and they kind of need a quarterback. And like we talked about before, I can't really see Jerry Jones trading the way a quarterback in the state of Texas. So this whole situation is really weird 
for Romo. Like, you know, when he was playing, I mean, there's a good way of saying that he could have been the second best quarterback in the history of the Dallas Cowboys behind Rod Staubach because as good as Aikman was, he only threw for over 20 touchdowns one time in his career. And I get different passing age and everything else like that. But, you know, Romo was really good. And, yeah, he's injured. And, yeah, he's not exactly, quote, unquote, reliable because, you know, for the last few years he got hurt, you know, a lot. But at his best, he's still a top 10 quarterback in the league. Yeah, and I do think that Tony Romo has been probably one of the most underappreciated and one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league because I – He's he had the one knock on him was that oh you know this team constantly goes eight and eight and all that well he honestly in those years he wasn't the problem honestly if anything I we see how this team performed without Tony Romo except for twenty twenty sixteen when is when Dak Prescott wasn't even in the league yet we see how the Cowboys performed without Tony Romo and this team wasn't productive at all but anyways getting back to his future team. Uh, I do think that I did say on the football show that he will end up in Houston, mm-hmm. but he did bring the idea that Jerry Jones doesn't want to trade to an in-state team. Like you're gonna get like his ego. You're gonna give him to another Texas team. It's not like you're trading him to the Saints or something like that, where it's a different state and whatever. You're trading him in Texas. Like that's ugh, like, I can't, <laughs> I just can't see Jerry Jones doing that. The ego that he's got, you're gonna give away. Like I understand it's a different division, different conference, all that. But still, man, you're going to give him to another Texas team so that way they can basically take your butt. It's not even like he doesn't like Romo. He loves Romo. And you're going to give him away. And the thing is, like with Romo, so last year, or not last year, two years ago, right? Because last year, you know, we saw how good Dak Prescott can be. Two years ago in 2015, the Cowboys went 4-12. and Three of those wins were by Romo. You know, and the year before that, they went 12-3, and made it to the playoffs, had that whole catch controversy thing that happened with that. Dez called it. And yeah, and he had a really good year: thirty-four touchdowns, nine interceptions. And that's only three years ago. And I understand since then he's only played in a total of five games over two years. But that five number is kind of weird because after about week six or seven, they basically decided, "Yep, never mind. We're going to stick with Dak." Right? Like it was one of those things where if Dak had gone, let's say three and three over the first six games, then all of a sudden we have a different conversation, right? Then maybe Romo gets placed back in. I still think he can be good. Now you have to wonder about his health and everything else like that. But from a fantasy football perspective, I mean, the dude is, when healthy, still one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And it's not even the age thing, right? Because he's going to be 37 years old. The age thing doesn't have to worry you because Tony Romo is 37, but Tom Brady is 39 and he just won a Super Bowl. So it's not the age thing that's going to worry you. It's the fact that he keeps getting hit and he's getting hurt. So the best thing to do would be giving him to a good offensive line best thing to do would be give him to a good defense so that way the defense you know can take away a lot of the pressure on you because we saw a few years back you talked about them being eight and eight all the time okay the finally you know they gave him some stuff to work with back in 2014 they basically didn't have him do kind of like all of the work they didn't have him basically shoulder all of the load that's when you had demarco murray throw, going for almost 1900 yards and you had des bryant at his peak with about 1320 yards Like, you had people that he can kind of give the ball off to and not rely so much on him, and we saw how well that worked out. And if you can do that for, like I said, a Houston, a Kansas City, a Denver, whoever, then that's the best-case scenario for him probably. Yeah, and did you just compare Tony Romo to Tom Brady? I am saying that they both have done well at an advanced age. Okay. (laughs) I'm sorry. That's the only thing I took from that. I'm kidding. Uh, But, no, if uh, he ends up in Denver, that definitely has to boost the Marius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders' fantasy value. If he ends up with the Texans, I think DeAndre Hopkins is back as a top five, top ten receiver in fantasy. I Honestly, I'm going to have to think Fedoris may get a boost in fantasy as well. No, that's fine. Fedoris can get his yards. That's fine. I don't care about that. The reason why I hated Fedoris last year is because Brock Osweiler looked at him like he was dating him. It was just like he loved him (laughs) so much. He's just like, you every time, you every time, you every time, you. (laughs) Romo, yes, fine. He loves tight ends. That's Jason Witten about that. But he would at least throw it to DeAndre Hopkins as well. Like, that was the reason why I didn't like Osweiler this because he never looked at DeAndre Hopkins. He was basically someone that was just, like, off in the corner, like, yeah, yeah, you don't exist to me right now. It's all of Russell Westbrook's teammates. It's just like, yeah, yeah, you don't exist right now. My time. I'm just going to do what I want kind of thing. All right. Well, before we leave, we got to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. And it wouldn't be a show without Jimmy Garoppolo. Mm-hmm. And uh, apparently there was a – well, this is considered fake news now. Right. And there was a farewell post on – Jimmy Garoppolo's Instagram account. And it was basically saying 
that he wants to thank New England for his time, and he said, peace out, Boston. Mm -hmm. But according to ESPN, it looked like it was a hoax, a hack, and that, you know, pretty much this was a fake post that he didn't post this on his official account. And, you know, the post has been deleted. But it looks like the Patriots do intend to keep the Garoppolo. But we have to talk about the social media post, man. It has – it came out as fake news. It – yeah. And we will believe anything. And it got taken down earlier today. Maybe that's because if it was him and he was joking, you saw it in the morning, he's like, oh, that's a bad idea. Delete, 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 delete. Or yeah, someone he was, like, he was like Matt Hardy, delete, yep. delete. <laughs> delete. He was like broken Matt Hardy, just delete <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. Or he could have been where it was actually you know hacked, and he woke up this morning and his agents calling him. Why did you do this thing? It's like, wait, what? What did I didn't do? Oh, I didn't do that. Well, delete it. All right, delete, delete, delete. delete. <laughs> I love that chant, by the way. It's really good. He's going to go to it. WWE, so he's going to get all those chants. By the way, uh, he will. He will. And then they're going to put no, him in the, NXT, the, and then they're going to say delete in the crowd. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. <laughs> I didn't even they, like they, that that much. Gonna, I thought that was gonna, really weird. They're going to say the absolute guy. Yeah, no, it was kind of a kind of a weird gimmick, honestly. It worked, but, though. But that was probably the best gimmick that he's ever had. But anyway, I'm sorry to talk about wrestling on this fantasy football show. Sorry, guys. Uh, I just had to bring, bring that reference into there. But, yeah, you know, it was a crazy free agency period. And, honestly, you know... It, the only way Jimmy Garoppolo will go to Cleveland would be if they give up the number one pick. Right. So basically, they're going to trade Miles Garrett for <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo. And from a fantasy football perspective, hey, you know what? That's good for Kenny Britt. That's good for Corey Coleman. Right. But it has not happened. I, I don't know. As of right now, I don't think Cleveland wants to give up that number one pick. No. And for the Patriots, they, they might as well like kind of throw it out there kind of thing. Because if you can get him on there, if you can actually get – Jimmy Garoppolo on there. We talked about the wide receivers that they have right now, and that'll be a good situation for everything to kind of start falling in place. And you also have the Browns who have 97 draft picks. So, you know, eventually Law of Average is going to find something that's going to work out for him. 97 draft picks. Wow. I mean, look at all the draft picks I got. I, it's I a know. lot. I know. I just I just like how you over exaggerate things. Like, whenever we talk about Frank Gore and Adrian Peterson, they're like, oh, we know Frank Gore is like 97 years old. I say 97 a lot. I don't know why. I don't know why either. What is it with you in the number 97? I don't know. I, I don't know. I do that a lot. I I don't know. All right. I don't have well, a good answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to get out of here. We uh, pretty much does, we pretty much covered all what we needed to cover today. And I will be back on Tuesday. I will be back by myself. Uh, I will discuss any type of news that's fantasy related. And I, I don't expect, you know, fan, free agency kind of slowed down a little bit today it's not it wasn't as popping as it was like yeah yesterday. day one tends to do that yeah yeah so you never know I, I might pick up again you know i do think tony romo might get traded right this weekend we never know we might have a surprise trade for jimmy garoppolo yeah we might have a surprise trade for Kirk cousins who knows yeah yeah but uh, a lot can happen in, in the next three days so i will be back to talk about all that as always you know you can catch the show on a variety of platforms google play stitcher soundcloud youtube and on gsmcpodcast.com you can also follow the show on multiple social media platforms as twitter instagram facebook twitter and instagram i believe it is uh, at gsmc underscore football and you can also like the show on facebook at the going to meet concepts fantasy football podcast and i think it's time for us to get out of here it is hot in this studio as always i'm jeremiah and i'm anthony and we like to thank you guys for tuning in and see you guys next week